Hey everyone, welcome to lesson 10. Today we've got a, kind of a shorter one. We're gonna take a look at working with layers. Uh, what we'll work on today is taking a look at what, what the layer panel is, what we can do to help organize art with it, how we'll create, rearrange, lock layers, create sub layers, so we can name stuff to kind of make it easier to navigate, um, how to locate objects, move them, copy paste, uh, make clipping masks. So a lot of kind of individual skills that as a whole are really like helpful little pieces to work on. And we'll kind of take a look at too, as far as when you're working on a document that has layers, kind of why you'd use it and what it kind of is helpful with. So starting off, first thing you do is obviously jump into Blackboard, pull up in lesson 10 start files. We're also gonna take a look today at a shape based logo and we'll jump into that after the lesson. So we're starting off with our lesson files and there's two files in the folder. The first one is our start file here. The second one is this text and we're gonna kind of come back to this in just a minute. So before we get into layers, probably what we should talk about is what they are and how, they can, how they're helpful. If you've used Photoshop, you're obviously where layers are a really important piece of that because it helps you kind of stack your art. We've just been using the arrange, send to back, bring to front kind of commands so far. Layers are going to get us a little bit more in depth with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my window panel and down to where it says layers, and that's going to pop open this whole sub panel here. Now, when I take a look at this panel itself, I'm going to see kind of a couple options on it. Obviously here it's just showing all my art and I've got some buttons down here. We'll take a look at those in a minute, but also notice that I have this little kind of pull down here. And basically what this is showing me is that this is all the art that's located inside this document. Now on the left-hand side, I can hide things. I can lock things so they're not editable or movable. And I've also got this way of selecting art. So here I've got, looks like some teeth. If I click on this, it's just automatically selects them. So seeing with how that kind of is all built, also notice that groups are, all kind of chunked together. So each individual tooth is actually a part of a group. And then that group is organized here under this little drop down. So what we've got is we've got all this art. We can also search through layers based on different kind of criteria, but right now it's all kind of pretty cut and dried as far as what it all, what's all in there. Now I do notice I got this kind of big image on the bottom. I can rearrange things by clicking and dragging within a layer. So I've got this photo and looks like it's something we're gonna probably create a mask with. If I drag it up, it's actually hiding right now behind this rectangle that I have in the background. So what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of take this and what we're gonna do is build like packaging for a cookie brand. And I wanna take a look at how I can organize all this and kinda of get this, to make a little bit more sense and kinda of play with my stacking order a little bit. It looks like, I probably wanna make it look like that cookie is in the mouth. I wanna get these hands so we can actually see them all the way. So I got a little bit of stacking stuff that I need to clean up. And this is just kind of a faster way of working. So. First thing I want to do is I want to take a look at adding in some new layers. I'm going to collapse these all back. And if I double click on a collapsed layer, I can rename it. I'm just going to call this thing package. That's just my general package background. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some more layers. I'm going to create a new layer and I can double click to name it. So I'm going to create one for my arms. I'll create another one and this one will be for the mouth. And on my mouth layer, I'm actually going to create a couple different things. I got these teeth I'm going to obviously want to include, but I have a whole mouth and I have that photo behind it. So what I'm going to do is on this mouth, I'm actually going to create a sub layer underneath it. I can name that right away. And that'll just be for my teeth. So I can kind of get stuff stacked and organized. Now, you're going to notice that how I drag from bottom to top, that was kind of my stacking order, just like you've probably seen Photoshop if you're familiar with it. Whatever appears closest to the top is what's going to appear most closely to you visually. Now, as I build these new layers, what I'm essentially saying is that no matter what's on this package layer, whatever's on these layers above it is going to show up in front of those. I also notice that as I'm building these things all in here, I've got all this kind of this, this stacking order. I've got these colors, so everything's kind of color coded. So like when I select something and I see that's highlighted in blue, I probably know that it's on that package layer. So that's gonna be kind of another visual reminder of where I'm at with everything. <clears throat> What I want to do first is I want to start kind of moving some stuff around. I want to move those teeth, that mouth, that picture. I want to get some of that stuff out of that package layer and into that mouth layer. So I'm going to collapse or I'm going to expand this out here and here. And I want to find all my pieces. So it looks like there's the top teeth. Here's the bottom teeth. Here's the mouth shape as a whole. I'm going to take these teeth and I'm going to shift click on them. So I have them both selected. I'm going to throw them in my teeth layer. And now if I take a look and I click on them or highlight them here, Notice that they're now outlined in green, right? Now that they're outlined in green, but their sub outline is in blue, that's because that's that sub layer color. Okay, so don't get confused by that. The major outline is in green, and now I know that it's in that layer. I've got my mouth, I'm gonna drag that down here. I've got this, this uh, image, I'm gonna drag it back there. And now because I move this, it's now not hidden behind that rectangle anymore. Now it's its own image, it's kind of in front of this whole path. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that 
this cookie looks like it's being kind of placed inside that mug. So there's a couple things I'm gonna do. First off, I need two things in order to make a clipping mask. What I'm gonna do is deselect my teeth here, so I'll click away. Now on this mouth, that's what I want it to fit in, right? So I can control a couple things. First off, I wanna control where this image is gonna be placed inside that mouth, but it's not really super helpful with the image in front. I'm gonna put the path in front so I can see that. I can kind of get an idea of like centering or placement on that. And that'll probably be pretty good right about there. Now, what I need to do is I need to clip this image into this path. Now, in order to do that, I need to have both of these objects selected. So if I click on one and hold my shift key and click on the other, I've got them both selected. I see they're in green because I know it's on my mouth layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clipping mask. So if I go to object, clipping mask, and then make, it's going to, sub, it's going to put that mask whatever with whatever's behind it it's going to trap it in that area so now when i take a look i've got this clip group here and it's not like anything changed it's just now that is no longer considered art it's just considered a space to hide that image i can always reset where this image is i can edit this clip group so if i come in and i select this or if i click on this group and then double click it it's going to show me what that kind of preview area is if i grab this image layer i can actually click and reposition it so if I want to kind of adjust my positioning, maybe I want all the cookies on the edge. I don't want to see a little end of it. I want to make it look like the guy's mouth is full. I can adjust that. So when I'm done, this is an isolation. I'm just editing it within a group. So I can always go back or double click outside. And now that's set in place. Now, your order wasn't right. Maybe like actually your clip group was on top. And now you don't see the teeth. Remember, it's just a matter of rearranging whatever's on that layer. And whatever's on top of the layer is going to appear in front. So there's my mouth. Now, obviously, with my mouth in place, the arms don't look right. So I've got a couple things. I got this arms group. Let's grab these arms and I'll click on them to verify that. Yep, that's the two. I'll shift click to select them both and throw them into my arms layer. And just like that, now they're in their own layer. When I click on the object, I'll see here within my group, grab my path and then make sure I got both of them. So I got one and they're grouped together. It looks like a, like a compound area of a path. So when I select it now, I'm seeing that it shows up in red because I know that it's in this arms layer. Now, because I've got multiple objects within a layer, but it doesn't look right. I want it to make it look like he's kind of shoveling the cookies into his mouth. I want to move this whole arms layer up above the mouth layer. So now it appears in front. So that's kind of the power of working with this is that now I'm kind of getting a little bit more organization. Things are making a little bit more sense. Um, as far as getting everything in place and positioning and organizing, when I have really complex documents where I've got a lot of kind of moving parts to it or I've got a lot of different kind of pieces, this is a really fast way of working. Otherwise, if I've got documents where maybe I've got like 30, 40 different pieces of art that I've drawn, if I don't have them in layers, then I'm forced to go forwards, backwards, one at a time, trying to figure where it is. So this kind of is a, a nice workaround for not having to worry about that. Now, coming back to the actual package layer, I've got a couple things here. I've got that back background rectangle. I'm just going to leave this locked. I don't want to accidentally bump on that. I also have something that looks like it's hidden here. If I click on it, I got like this little shape. Let me drag this up above my rectangle. So it looks like I got kind of like this little belly color that I'm going to put on him. And I've got this other group and this looks like it's all his spots. So that all looks good. I'm happy with kind of how this all is positioned. I've got everything stacked. Got my clipping mask mask made and my, my stacking order looks correct. All the art that I've drawn is now exactly where I want it to be. Now that brings us to that other document that we have, this packaging text. And I've got kind of a couple things here. So what I'm gonna do is if I take a look, I've got two layers here. I've got this brand text and I've got this cookie type. So if I take a look under cookie type, it's saying chocolate chip. And if I click on it, oh, there it is right down there. So let me zoom out a little bit. Now, what I can do is I can grab all of this art and I can copy paste it into the document and it's gonna remember that layers property. So I select this all, I'll do my command C. And I'm going to just jump back in here and throw it into this layer. And now it's asking me, the color swatch is a conflict. Do you want to merge the swatches or add them? I'll just merge these swatches. It's saying that I've got two different kind of color swatches put together. And here they all are. Now notice that it's got these as separate pieces. So I've got this cookie type. That's this down here. I like it. I want it to be in front. I'm just going to position it down on the bottom. And I've got this brand text. And notice it's all layered underneath all my different areas. And I'm going to select them. And with these things selected, I'm going to go ahead and bring them into position. I want to kind of look like this is the eyebrow above it. Now, because I had some colors that merged in, I want to change object colors. 
and a fast way of doing this, like here I've got like this and this, and it's all in a group and it's all selected. What I wanna do is I wanna change the iris color on both of these, but I can do them at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this and it shows that it's selected. I'm seeing that dark gray that aligns to this. And then I'm gonna use my command button and I'm gonna click on this other one. So now I got them both selected at the same time. So now if I change these, I can take a look for color. I can go into my palette. I can maybe grab this color, which I think looks good. And now I've got that easy update made by just adjusting this all right within that layers panel. So that's really the power of working with layers. Obviously there wasn't like a whole ton to this. It's just a matter of kind of organizing, but once you get comfortable with working with layers, it really speeds up your design process. And I think that's really the power of this. So when you're done with these things, you can do a file save as command. You're again, going to save this as a PDF. You can throw it right on your desktop, make sure you're changing your format. And I'll just change my location of my desktop. Make sure you got your last name and a description and you can hit save. And that's what you'll email me over for the file. So I'll just hit the save PDF. Now, as far as your layers panel, I actually like to keep this one in my layers as my, or on my property panel on the side here. I know this is what the layers icon looks like, but this is one that I like to keep nested over there at all times, because this is sometimes if I'm messing with something or just trying to get to like my position, my stacking orders is not looking right. I know this is a real quick jump to that. So that's it for lesson 10, pretty straightforward, pretty simple stuff. Just a matter of kind of getting used to working within those layers. Now, next thing we're gonna take a look at is the next project, which is the shape-based logo. So first thing I wanna do is walk you through what the project requirements are, talk about a little ideation process stuff, and then we'll take a look at kind of process what this might look like for you. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a look at project requirements. So what I wanna do first is take a look at here, what we're doing is creating logos Last time we did them out of text, this time we're going to do them based on shapes. And what I really want to focus on is kind of custom shapes here. So you're going to create five different preliminary versions in black and white of a logo created with a pen tool, custom shapes, customizing using all the tools that we've seen so far. What you're going to do is create a logo for a new local coffee shop called Recharge. It specializes in like classic coffee cafe stuff, but also offers lots of workspace, high speed internet, lots of charging ports, all that kind of stuff. So it's really like a workspace and a coffee bar. Now what they're looking for is a logo and that's what we're going to need to figure out how we're going to make this look. Now, as far as process goes, generally I start with rough sketches. I'm not always using my rough sketches for actual like tracing an illustrator. Sometimes they're just to kind of get some ideas down because I can work so much faster with a pencil. Even if it's super rough, even if I'm not like a great traditional artist, I can just kind of sketch some general ideas out before I start throwing them into Illustrator. You should customize your text with the create outlines command. This is kind of a fun one when you're building logos to kind of really make things fill spaces and give a little bit of a sense of personality. You should create custom shapes with a pen tool, and then obviously you can edit them in any way you see fit, whether it's just editing custom pen shapes or if it's using any of the various tools that we've covered so far. Your logo should be proportional, it should be balanced, and you'll always start by creating them in black and white. I always just build them in black and white, and then when I'm done, then I can add in color. Your finished files should be submitted to me and you'll submit this via email as a PDF. So again, you're gonna have five different uh, versions of this. You can just build five different artboards. For your artboards, you can make them four inches by four inches. So don't worry about um, the sketch part. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna roll that into kind of the, the overall grade. I just wanna see that you've done, done some preliminary work as far as ideation. You should have again, separate custom shapes created should have customized text, customized objects, and that you're gonna go ahead and build custom colors for all these so that when you're done, you'll have two versions, a black and white and a color. Now I do have a sample file for you to take a look at. This is something that kind of, I think really works well in terms of looking at kind of process and how you can go from something sketched out to something finished in Illustrator. But before I get into that, what I wanna talk about is ideation, how you can kind of come up with ideas. Um, I think this is a perfect candidate for kind of like a T-chart. Uh, T-charts are really ways that you can start using kind of some a real simple brainstorming activity to come up with different possibilities, different ideas. So what I did on the left-hand column is I thought of all the kind of tech-related stuff, right? And then on the right, I, I did all the kind of stuff that would be like visual images that might be uh, associated with like a coffee shop. So here I've got like Wi-Fi symbol, plugs, cable, screen, mouse, electricity, battery icon. This isn't the only list you should probably add onto yours. So maybe it's things like laptops, maybe it's things like USB ports, whatever it is, but you want to kind of include all these, as many of these as you can think of. And then on the right hand side, I just started listing off stuff I can think of when I think about a coffee shop, like steams, cups, coffee pots, spoons, filters, saucers, beans. 
this is just to get started. Sometimes it's like the, the standard, um, a standard cup. Sometimes it's like a cardboard cup. So there's lots of different ways you can think about it. But then what I do is I start kind of cross-referencing these things. Like maybe I had a spoon and maybe inside my spoon, I'm going to use a battery icon, or maybe I'm going to use a screen and maybe on top of the screen, some steam is going to be coming off the top. So I can kind of start cross-referencing these to start coming up with ideas. And as you're doing this, that's where that kind of sketching process works real fast, because now you can just kind of like, oh, maybe I'll just try and see what like a spoon might look like if it has a plug coming off of it, that kind of thing. So you can kind of start coming up with those ideas fast. Now for this one, what I did is I did like a cup, did some steam, and then I did kind of like a battery icon. So this was my rough sketch. I brought it in. I did my pen tool work on it, kind of added my steam, my basic shapes, had a nice kind of balance to it. I added in a battery and then I applied a warp effect to it. I also had a no, kind of more simple, like I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, but maybe I should go a little more simple. And then here I just did like a lightning bolt inside a cup, like a charging icon. So again, when I had one that I could kind of create variations real quickly because I have a base shape or a base idea to work off of. So again, what you're going to be doing for this is as you create yours, you'll be working in a new document. You can make these things, let's call them five inches by five inches. You're going to need five artboards as you're going to be doing five of them. And then you'll create a black and white and a color version of each. And that's what you'll submit as your final PDF. So as far as process goes, I think if you haven't done a logo before, I think this is a really fun way of like now you're kind of seeing like how to think about doing it, kind of process for it, bringing it in and refining it. What I would like to see is not one logo with four variations. I'd like to see five very separate and distinct logos. Generally, when I'm working for clients and I'm kind of coming up with, with ideas for putting together logos, I'm not going to present them one. I'm going to present them maybe 10, 12, maybe rough or maybe a little more variations like this, but then I can kind of start getting a feel for what the client wants and then I can kind of refine from there further. So this will be sent over via email as a PDF. Uh, the due date and instruction or in, as far as submission is all up on Blackboard. So if you have any questions, you can reach out, with, out to me. Otherwise, I will see you for the next lesson. Thanks, guys.